It's widely accepted that Australopithecus afarensis are, to put it simply, the ancestors of Homo. So, Habilis, Ergaster, Erectus, Heidelbergensis, all the way to Sapiens. But what if I told you that 20 fossils were collected from a previously unknown hominid that kind of throws a wrench into all that? There is debate to this day about if this genus is actually our ancestor, and that if they disprove whether or not we actually came from Afarensis. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of Auroran, a mysterious early hominid from the Miocene Epoch, roughly 6 to 5.1 million years ago. Like with my Loch Ness Monster documentary, I'm going to state the facts and theories, and then let you make up your own mind on if you think this might be one of our early ancestors or not. If you enjoy documentary content like this, I have a full documentary playlist where I cover a range of topics, from cryptids to history to prehistory. This is my first documentary about a prehistoric topic. Kind of surprised I'm not making one about a dinosaur, to be honest, but human evolution is cool too. I'll save the dinosaurs for the big Cretaceous documentary in a few months. You know, dinosaurs are my favorite, they're the best, but there's a lot to prehistory outside of dinosaurs. They're just a small part of prehistory as a whole. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff. And to call this topic the tip of the iceberg is the biggest understatement ever. Human evolution as a whole is just the tip of that iceberg. And this is just the tip of the, evo <laughs> the human evolution topic as well. There is so much cool knowledge, and I love it. If you enjoy audio-based content like this, be it educational documentaries, historical stories, or original narrated stories, please check, please check out some of my original audio content. I've made several original audio stories. They're full of dinosaurs and other prehistoric species that reappear in the modern age after an anomaly resurrects all extinct animals, and the stories follow the chaos that happens because of that event. I've also made other documentaries, such as an hour and 40 minute one covering everything to do with the Loch Ness Monster, and a mini one, which this also is, telling the story of the time a ghost ship killed one third of Norway's population. I also make gaming content as a more relaxed type of video where we can just hang out and, and uh, have a good time, and those are usually uploaded between these more intensive videos that take longer to make. They're kind of on pause right now, though, since I'm just basically waiting on FNAF Plus to come out to make as my next game series. But if you're interested in any of that, please check out my other content, my documentaries, and the playlist with my original narrated stories. Those will all be linked below, as well as the playlist that has a general compilation of different videos I've made. Be sure to like and subscribe if this kind of content interests you. This video style is a new format that I'm starting this year because I've discovered I love making this kind of video. But my other more relaxed gaming content and camping stuff is still going to be a thing as well. All right, let's get to the topic of the video. If you were going to write a story with the goal of making it be as confusing as possible, you probably couldn't beat how confusing human evolution is. Every time we start to get a roadmap figured out, a new species is found, or an old species is no longer considered valid, and thus the dead end. So, while we have a lot of good ideas, there's still a lot that we just don't know. It seems that new hominids are found all the time, and Auroran is an example. A possible new addition to the tree of human evolution. Maybe. It also might not even be a close relative at all. <laughs> human evolution is a very complicated topic, and... This might be an early ancestor, or just something that branched off and died out. We'll get into that. But first, we need to know where it was discovered. Auroran was discovered in Kenya, a country in eastern Africa. This region, eastern Africa, is a common area for early hominid fossils to be found. And it's clear that hominids have been spread heavily across this region for millions of years. They can be found across Africa, but Eastern Africa does seem to be a bit of a hotspot when, when compared to other regions. If you look at a map of where hominid fossils have been found, most are spread across the eastern half of the African continent. So it's no surprise that Auroran was found in this region too. 
Aurora in itself is an incredibly ancient hominid. Now, when I say ancient, I don't mean it existed in, like, the Cretaceous, alongside the dinosaurs. Uh, no. No, we're about 50 million years too early in that case. If primate fossils were ever found that existed in the Cretaceous, that would be wild. Uh, but as far as we know, our ancestors back then were tiny little squirrels of their era, basically. Cute little things that could probably take a chunk out of your finger. No, by ancient I mean it existed possibly as far back as 6 million years ago. Named Original Man, it earns this by being one of the earliest species to exist in our direct family tree of bipedal apes. As I said a minute ago, Original Man was discovered in Kenya in the year 2000, Though a molar fossil from 1974 is also thought to possibly come from this species, but this is not known for certain. 1974 was also the year a very famous early hominid fossil was found, the Australopithecus afarensis specimen Lucy. The Auroran genus itself is still officially recognized as being found in 2000. The Tuggan Hills of Barango County, Kenya, to be specific, is where the Auroran fossils were discovered, by Bridget Sinnott and Martin Pickford, from the French National Museum of Natural History. After the fossils were found in 2000, they were kept at the Kipsarman Village Community Museum. But then the museum was closed. Afterward, the fossils have apparently been locked away in a secret bank vault in Nairobi, which is the capital of Kenya. Okay then, sounds like the plot of a conspiracy thriller. So Aurora and is an obscure species, but the topic is interesting, and I have a soft spot for obscure and weird prehistoric animals. So, with, this, with the discovery covered, we'll move on to the description of Auroran, and after that we'll cover its status as a human ancestor, and then we'll cover the animals it shared its world with. Unlike my documentary, How a Ghost Ship Killed One-Third of Norway, this isn't a topic I can just follow a series of events to piece the story together with. This is going to be more of an overview. Sometimes you can get stories from fossils about what a specific individual went through or died from, but not in this case. So we have to try to piece everything there is to know about Aurora and together through very fragmentary remains. So let's examine what Aurora might have looked like in life from what little we have to reconstruct the species with. We don't have many fossils of Aurora. The entire genus is represented by one classified species, kind of like Carnotaurus, actually. Though the difference there is the one skeleton of Carnotaurus we have is very well preserved. And as I said earlier, Aurora tugenensis is known from several fragments and pieces of at least five different individuals. The 20 fossils we have include several teeth and the posterior part of a mandible a part of a jaw, which is in two pieces, a symphysis, femur of fragments, part of a humerus, which is the long arm bone that goes from your shoulder to elbow, digit bones from the hand, and a distal thumb phalanx. An isolated molar that may or may not belong to Auroran was also discovered in 1974, which I mentioned earlier. The name Auroran might have been used there first for this molar before the species was officially discovered in 2000. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I found some things that said Auroran was first described in 1975, but the species is like everywhere else described as being found in 2000. So I'm not totally sure about that, but that's my guess about what happened right there. Anyway, the fossils from this species range from 6.1 to 5.8 million years old. If the animal evolved before or lived until later is unknown, but most likely these dates represent the majority of its range. The teeth of this animal are interesting. They provide evidence that this might be the oldest member of the line that led to humans. The teeth of this species curiously resembles the teeth of modern humans way more than it resembles the teeth of Australopithecus afarensis. This is significant because Afarensis is seen as our direct ancestor from 3 million years after Auroran. Yet Auroran is the more dubious one, even though it has the more human-like features. Now evolution doesn't go in a straight line, and heck, it sometimes goes backwards. 
So that doesn't prove or disprove anything. Auroran's teeth were smaller than Afarensis's, and they have an enamel, an enamel, excuse me, almost identical to ours. So while on the topic of its teeth, they also seem to suggest a plant-based diet. Leaves, fruit, seeds, roots, nuts were all likely commonly found in the diet of Auroran, along with insects for protein. Auroran's femur also resembles a modern human femur much more closely than it resembles other apes from the era. The teeth and the femur are both part of the reason some argue that there is a direct link to modern humans with this genus. The few fossils we have also seem to indicate the species was bipedal, due to where the muscles and ligaments would have been attached. It's also possible that these species might have been able to create basic shelters. However, this cannot be proven and only inferred as a possibility from the few fossils we have. Several apes can build shelter, so this is definitely a possibility, as building something simple to protect yourself isn't a very complicated task in and of itself. The species itself lived not in open grassland, but in evergreen forests, so the climbing ability mentioned before also makes sense, and this could have complemented its dietary habits. Fire usage is very unlikely, though, and that's putting it lightly. Not just because of the plant-based diet, but even Australopithecus afarensis roughly 3 million or so years later didn't control fire. Fire was not something humans, the Homo genus, learned to harness until at the absolute earliest 2 million years ago. That itself is a controversial date, though, as strong evidence for controlled fire does not come till later around the time of Homo erectus, I believe. Either way, it can be more or less definitively stated that Auroran didn't control fire, or even use it. Even if we use the 2 million years ago estimation, we're still about 4 million years too early. So, no controlled fire for Auroran. You lose. Good day, sir. On screen is a really helpful timeline I found that shows when exactly it existed prior to controlled use of fire, as well as toolmaking, confirmed bipedalism, and even more advanced concepts such as art, which might have appeared around the same time as fire usage. As you can see, Auroran existed in a relatively small window of time, well before controlled fire. And again, controlled fire was not something that became a concept until the Homo genus evolved. You can find this timeline in the description, and I'd recommend you check it out, as it is actually interactable. The size of Auroran itself was roughly that of a chimpanzee still, and despite likely being an early bipedal, as an early step away from apes and in the direction of humans, it was still able to climb trees and probably spent a lot of its time in trees. Now, we don't know exactly how this species, heck, how this genus, relates to humans. It's possible we evolved from it. It's possible it could be one of the very early ancestors, but we don't know. Australopithecus afarensis, which existed two to three million years later, as far as evolution goes, is still seen as the ancestor that really took the step towards humanity today. It's possible, though, that Auroran represents an early step in that direction. And we don't really know exactly where the steps that led to us began. We have an idea, but we find these very ancient hominids that could be an ancestor or just offshoots that died out. Kind of like Paranthropus boisei, which is basically an offshoot that existed alongside early humans, but was far more... monkey still. I guess gorilla. They would be more gorilla than human. But that is kind of the whole story of human evolution. If you try to plot out the map, you're not going to go in a straight road. There are so many branches and offshoots and subspecies to add to the main route that you're going to have a bad time driving it. So the question though, is Auroran an ancestor we evolved from or is it something else that just didn't lead anywhere? If it is a relative and ancestor to humanity, it would be very far back. 
at the very base of the family tree of direct ancestors at least. This would be a very primitive, very ape-like, and very early species that started walking down the evolutionary road that led to us, if it did. The few fossils we have are from, as I've said, at least five different individuals, which is good. Having more individuals is always good at getting a better understanding for the species as a whole. Still, that doesn't change the fact that this whole era basically has fragment fragmentary fossils of different and little understood hominids, and finding which one was the direct ancestor is the hard part. The best understood of the early hominids before Australopithecus afarensis would likely be Ardipithecus ramidus, which existed about 2 million years after Auroran. Since Auroran also appeared so soon after the branch off from chimpanzees occurred, it is likely that they appeared outwardly much more ape-like than they would resemble humans, probably still being covered in fur. This would be the case millions of years later in Australopithecus, and a more human shape probably only began to truly take form in Homo habilis, more than a million years after that. But remember, they did have some features that were more human-like than Australopithecus. So who knows, honestly. Like I said, evolution sometimes can go backwards. So at the very least, it's you can have some fun speculative ideas. But most likely, Auroran outwardly appeared very ape-like. I know, I'm starting to sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but the horse is already dead and fossilized, so who cares? Either way, there is not enough evidence at this time to support if this species is an early ancestor of humans, or if it is an offshoot that is not directly related or led to us. Experts remain divided on this topic. Either way, it lived at the point that the common ancestor between modern chimpanzees and humans split off, so the possibility of it being an early ancestor cannot be disproven at this time. The fact that some of its physical features, such as its teeth and femur, do resemble modern humans more than other apes from later on, can make for an argument that it is related to modern humans in some way. I've said in other documentaries that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And at this time, we don't have enough evidence to settle the matter either way. Maybe someday we'll know for certain if Auroran is the sought-after missing link between humans and great apes. The Auroran page on the Smithsonian website states this unanswered question best. Quote, is Auroran a direct ancestor to Homo sapiens? If so, does this make Australopithecus afarensis a side branch of our hominid family tree that eventually hit a dead end? This is probably the biggest question relating to this species that I'd love to see resolved. If it was found that afarensis wasn't a direct ancestor, that would be such a wild and fascinating development. As of right now, though, Australopithecus afarensis is still seen as a direct ancestor, and I don't think that will change at any point in the future. Though you never know. As I've mentioned, Auroran has those features that resemble modern humans far more closely than Australopithecus does. And Auroran existed nearly 3 million years earlier than Australopithecus did. So you've got to wonder, is our ancestor Auroran? And is Australopithecus the off-branch? Or is Australopithecus the ancestor and Auroran the off-branch? Or is the answer somewhere in the middle? Are both our ancestors? Until we find more fossils, we just won't know. I've touched on a few species of hominids here and there, so in this next section, I'm going to take a little time to talk about some of the other early hominid species that existed instead of just focusing on Auroran. Not necessarily ones that existed alongside Auroran either, just some other early species in general. I'm not going to cover any of the extinct Homo species here. I'll reference some as needed, but those might get entire videos dedicated to them in the future. I'll be covering Australopithecus afarensis and very, uh, various other hominids from various points in time in this section, mostly to give a wider picture about what other species existed throughout history, before and after Auroran. 
They're all part of the same puzzle, after all. And while I can't go through them all, I'll, I'll cover some that I found notable. I want to talk about some of the others outside of Auroran as well, because there's just not that much on Auroran. And I want to share some of these other amazing animals with you and encourage you to learn about them. Especially since there's so little info on some of these, I could make an entire vid video about them. Okay, let's get to it. First, Australopithecus afarensis. At this time, it is still seen as the species we would evolve from. Afarensis is one of the earliest hominids, which is almost unanimously agreed upon by paleoanthropologists as being a direct ancestor to us. It's the earlier ones like Auroran, where the debate on which is the, which is the ancestor becomes more intense. Maybe it'll change in the future as we come to understand other species more, but as of right now, Afarensis is still seen as our direct ancestor. I mentioned earlier that if Auroran was found to be an ancestor to us, it might mean that Afarensis was an offshoot. But as of right now, that is just a theory, and a very controversial one. So anyway, what was Australopithecus afarensis? Existing in East Africa from 3.9 to 2.9 million years ago during the Pliocene Epoch, the species was first described in 1978, though fossils had been found earlier as far back as the 1930s. As I mentioned a while ago, Lucy, also known as AL288-1, was a female afarensis specimen that stood a little over three feet tall and whose fossilized remains made up roughly 40% of her whole body. Named after the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, she was determined to be 3.2 million years old. The species has arm and leg bones similar to apes like gorillas and orangutans, but was still bipedal, though likely less efficient at walking upright than humans are. The species had a tall face and robust jawbone. Their jaw, in fact, extended outward, a trait known as prognathism. Stone tools had been associated with the species as well, indicating they consumed at least some meat in their diet, though they were not strict carnivores. Like us, they were omnivorous. Afarensis stood between three to four feet tall on average, with males and females exhibiting sexual dimorphism and they likely fell prey to the major predators living in Africa at this time, including various big cats and prehistoric hyenas. Due to the sexual dimorphism the species exhibits, it is likely they existed in a polygonous society, like many modern apes do today. Afarensis displays lower sexual dimorphism than other species, and smaller teeth than other primates, and some have used this fact to argue that the species might have actually existed in a monogamous society. Either cannot be proven for certain, though, and today scientists still make a case for both. Afarensis has long been seen as the direct ancestor to modern humans. They did not seem to have a preferred habitat. Their fossils indicate they inhabited a wide range of areas with different conditions. Grasslands, woodlands, river or lakeside forests, and shrublands were all fair game. I touched on their diet a minute ago, but let me bring it back up now. Their diets vary depending on the environment they lived in. Forest-dwelling afarensis preferred forest plants, and grassland-dwelling afarensis preferred common savanna plants. The evidence of stone tools being used to butcher meat come from a young goat-sized bovid femur, and a cow-sized hoofed animal that had possible cut marks on its ribcage. Both are circumstantial, and as of this time, have not been proven either way to be from stone tools or not. If they were determined to be so, they would be the oldest known evidence of tool usage in the fossil record. Afarensis would go extinct 2.9 million years ago, but the Australopithecus as a genus would last until around 1.9 million years ago. And since the earliest known Homo specimen, LD350-1, existed 2.8 million years ago, with Homo habilis following 2.3 million years ago, this means human beings for a time coexisted with the Australopithecus genus, which is fascinating to think about. You gotta wonder how the two interacted. And since the earliest Homo species appeared so soon after Afarensis went extinct, you can even wonder if humans didn't coexist with Afarensis for however brief a time. A fascinating idea that we might not ever have the answer to. 
There is no evidence for it, but it is a fascinating idea to speculate about. Next, let's take a look at Auranopithecus. This is a far more ancient hominid than either Australopithecus or Auroran. Living in Greece for nearly a million years, from 9.6 to 8.7 million years ago. This hominid is thought to be one of, if not the last, common ancestors between humans, chimpanzees, or gorillas. This was a large and well-built hominid, likely being as large as a female gorilla today. There is no evidence that this genus, which has two known species, was bipedal as far as I can find. One thing I do feel the need to point out is that not every ape that is a hominid is necessarily related to humans, as the term applies to all great apes. And there are eight species still extinct, and they consist of humans, gorillas, chimps, and orangutans. We all share a common ancestor or, an, an, or ancestors, which branched off into different family lines with time. Hominins, meanwhile, are the direct family tree humans evolved from. Back to Auranopithecus, the name of this animal means celestial ape, and the genus is represented by two known species. There isn't much information on this species, but a recent, as in 2017, study determined that out of the hominid species living in Greece at this time, this one was more related to other apes than humans. Another hominid living in the area that is seen to be more closely related to humans than Auranopithecus is Graciopithecus, which I will have a segment de dedicated to in a little bit. There's not much more really of note to say about this genus. We haven't found enough fossils to have a clear picture of them yet. And the genus was only discovered in 2007, so it's also still relatively a, a new one. Maybe in the future we will get a better idea, but for now, the mind has to wander, and we have to work with what few fossils we have to understand what no doubt was a complex animal in its own right. Until we learn more, I'm going to leave this one here and move on to the next topic. A species that lived after Auroran was gone was Ardipithecus. This is an extinct genus of hominids that lived in Ethiopia during the early Pliocene, first appearing around 5.6 million years ago and having species living for around a million years afterwards before the last would die out. This species was once seen as one of humanity's earliest ancestors after our common ancestor diverged from chimpanzees. This is now a matter of debate, as is if this is even a hominid, but since this hasn't been decided either way just yet, I decided to include this animal in this section of the video. This hominid, Ardipithecus ramidus, a member of the African hominid subfamily, lived around 4.4 million years ago and fossil specimens have been found in Eastern Africa, with all known fossils of this genus coming from Ethiopia. It is agreed that this species did not represent the most recent ancestor between humans and chimpanzees, as it existed well after the most common ancestor for both. An interesting fact is that the fossils of this species have led some scientists to question if the origin of language might not have begun around this time, or at the very least begun earlier than what was once thought, as it had a significant vocal ability. This is highly speculative, but interesting to think about. If you look at a family tree of hominids, you'll see that even though it was once thought as such, Ardipithecus is not a direct ancestor to humans. Rather, we both share a common ancestor, and our two lineages branched very early on. This species would be more of a distant cousin to us rather than a direct evolutionary relative. Of course, with new discoveries comes new theories and maybe one day this idea will change. For right now though, you can see the accepted evolutionary tree shows them as an offshoot from us, branching off early on from a shared evolutionary ancestor. You know that Simpsons meme, I just think they're neat? That's basically my stance on this one. I wasn't originally going to cover it, but I just think it's neat, so here we are. When I watched Walking with Cavemen for the first time, I know, horribly outdated documentary, but still entertaining, just like Walking with Dinosaurs, I was kind of enamored with Boise Eye, and I even gave it a cameo in my book. So Boise Eye is believed to have been a specialist of its day, 
adapted for a specific lifestyle. In fact, this likely contributed to its extinction. If you adapt to live in a specific ecosystem, when that ecosystem inevitably changes, you just can't change with it. Animals that don't live in a specific niche always adapt, while those that depend on specific things tend to vanish in extinctions. Now, sometimes this species is called Australopithecus boisei. The reason is that some consider Paranthropus to be an outdated grouping. But I don't think there is a firm stance either way on that one. Either way, this species also existed well after Auroran was gone living from roughly 2.5 to 1.15 million years ago. All specimens of this species, and Paranthropus as a whole, have been found across a wide range of East Africa. After being discovered, they were referred to by some as Nutcracker Man due to its large teeth and jaw giving it resemblance to a vintage nutcracker. The diet of this species likely consisted of abrasive plants, roots, or other storage organs for plants, nuts, and other hard foods. It is theorized that, based on the behaviors from modern chimps and baboons, that this species probably forged for food during the cool morning hours rather than during the heat of the day. Interestingly, some stone tools have been found with specimens of the species. Stone tools as a whole is not an advanced concept. Many apes today use stone tools, but if this species created them, or if early Homo species created them and Boise Eye then found and used them, is unknown. It was thought they did originally, but today Homo habilis is seen as the more likely creator of the tools. This species also exhi exhibits circumstantial evidence of sexual dimorphism. However, this is based on only one specimen and cannot be confirmed for certain. It is a bit of speculative evolution that Walking with Caveman actually worked into its program over two decades ago, in the second episode if you're curious. Speaking of Walking with Caveman, you remember from earlier I mentioned that Boise Eye is thought to have gone extinct because it was a specialist in its environment and couldn't adapt to live in a new one when the environment changed? Well, the show has one line that I really like which describes exactly that. The trouble with being a specialist is that you end up getting left behind. This extinct species of hominid lived in the Miocene a little over 7 million years ago. That's only around 59 million years after, di after the dinosaurs went extinct. They lived in, interestingly, Athens, Greece. Originally known from only a lower jawbone, still armed with a single tooth, found in 1944, more fossils of the species were later found in Bulgaria. I found this interesting as it shows hominids might have left Africa well before early Homo species like Erectus did. I found this fascinating since I'd never heard of hominids leaving Africa until humans migrated out of it, and this was what made me decide to cover this hominid. However, it also supports a theory that hominids might have evolved outside of Africa itself. Remember, the Oranopithecus also lived outside of Africa around a million years earlier. I'll get into a little more detail about this theory in just a moment. I first want to cover a few more details about Greesopithecus. If I pronounce that wrong, I am sorry. I could not find a consistent way to pronounce this one's name. The fossils we have of this species are in such a poor state that this animal has been known as, quote, the most poorly known European Miocene hominid. The original site the first fossils were found in cannot be re-examined for more, as a swimming pool was built over it in the mid-1980s. Despite that, and despite the poor state of the few fossils we do have, we know a few things about them. In 2017, an analytical study done by paleontologists determined that this might very well be the oldest hominid, meaning it would be the oldest direct human ancestor after we div diverged off from the line that led to chimpanzees. The 2017 study determined that this species shares ancestry with modern humans, not chimpanzees. The study also suggested that hominid origins might not be from Africa, but rather the Mediterranean region. Just like Auroran, this really throws a wrench into a lot of our current theories of human evolution, and ideas will have to be reworked, but that's just how science works. The theory basically says... Descendants of this early hominid would migrate into Africa and humans would evolve from there before we would migrate back out. 
This is not universally accepted by any means, and many scientists dispute this theory. Though the fact hominids existed outside of Africa this early on does offer some evidence to support the idea. This hominid was much older than the oldest known hominid fossils found in Africa, Silanthropus, but it is not necessarily an ancestor to that genus. Overall, we don't know much about this species. We only know that it was a hominid due to its teeth, and hopefully we will one day find more fossils of it and learn its exact place in our evolutionary history, what it evolved into, and what it even looked like. Until then, though, we have to work with what we have found. Out of all the early hominids we have covered here, I think this one might be the most interesting in my opinion, and is the one that I hope we learn more about in the future. I hope more fossils are found someday, and maybe we'll get lucky and find a very well-preserved specimen somewhere. Only time will tell. The world that Auroran lived in was both familiar to what we'd see today, but it was also alien to what we'd see today. Some of the other animals that existed alongside Auroran will just say six million years for a nice round number, which puts us in the tertiary period. I know that's not the formal name for the Erebus, the one I grew up with, so that's what I'm going to call it. Included predatory sperm whale species in the oceans. Familiar animals to us also existed by this time, including bison, horses, antelope species, and the big cat species, Paranthropa, a species name I can't pronounce, here it is on screen. This is the oldest of the big cat species, and it very likely preyed on auroran and other early hominids. Salanthropus was another early, slightly older hominid that existed during the time auroran did, and other animals that existed at this time included various dinotherium species, Dinotherium was a very large elephant-like species with tusks growing out of its lower jaw. They lived in Africa and as far north as Europe. Walking with beasts shows the animal as being very aggressive, though personally I'm not sure how accurate that portrayal is. I would imagine they acted very similar to modern elephants though, which can be very aggressive. Dinotherium most likely died out when the forest habitat vanished and turned into grasslands near the end of the tertiary. Another animal that lived at this time was Amabilan, something that somehow manages to look both familiar and alien at the same time. I'm not kidding. Look it up. <laughs> look it up. I'll let that one be a surprise for you. You can look that one up and uh, have a shock. But it's, it's seriously, it's impressive how it manages to do both. And it kind of reminds me of how Adestis and members of that whole family managed to look both familiar and bizarre and alien at the same time. And Silotherium also existed at this time, and likely lived alongside Auroran. The two coexisted for Auroran's entire existence. However, if they ever encountered each other, I don't know, but it's possible they did. They both lived in Kenya at the same time. Another animal that may have been a threat to Auroran was Dinopithecus. Now, this is purely speculative on my part, but Dinopithecus first appears in the fossil record only a relatively short time after Auroran vanishes, only a few hundred thousand years. So there's a chance the two may have overlapped for a very brief time, but due to our lack of fossils for both, we don't have any evidence to say that they did. Again, there's no actual evidence Auroran and Dinopithecus lived at the same time. But if Auroran actually lasted a little bit longer than we think now, or Dinopithecus evolved just a little sooner than we think it did, then it's a possibility. And since both species have so few fossils between them to gather information from, I wouldn't say it's impossible that they coexisted briefly. But as of right now, there's no evidence to support them coexisting. This is just a little bit of speculation I had, and it's a fun idea to entertain. But remember, purely speculation. Now, terror birds did exist at the time Auroran did, but would not have encountered early hominids, which is fortunate for our ancestors, as they had enough major predators in their world without the reincarnation of the dinosaurs also breeding down their necks. Another apex predator that existed at the same time as Auroran was Megalodon. Look. Look. 
I'm going to level with you for just a second here. Megalodon is cool, but it's just a big shark. It's probably the most overhyped animal in prehistory outside of something like the T-Rex. It's a shark, not a goliath or a kaiju or a savage sea monster. It is just a shark, and it's extinct. Don't try to tell me it's still alive. It's not. We'd know. Trust me, we'd know. And if you want to use the argument, oh, it would evolve to live differently, well, then it wouldn't be a megalodon anymore. I get so sick of those channels on YouTube spreading so much misinformation that it's still alive. Megalodon was almost at the end of its heyday six million years ago. It didn't have much time left at this point. And in my opinion, Megalodon isn't even the coolest or the scariest prehistoric shark or shark-like fish. Call me when you discover the Adestus. I'd honestly rather see one of those in life over the Megalodon. Anyway, I suppose there is a small possibility a Megalodon could have eaten an Auroran at some point. Like with Encylotherium, Auroran did coexist with the Megalodon for its entire existence. So, wouldn't that be a way to go? We haven't found Auroran fossils exactly on the coast, but it's always a possibility the species was spread out enough that some individuals could have ended up in the region. Sorry about the little side tangent there. I just wanted to make that point clear. Megalodon is extinct. It would be very cool if it still existed, but when you're approaching science, you have to do it objectively and not let your personal feelings or wishes get in the way. I say something very similar in my Loch Ness Monster documentary. In that video, I said it would be very cool if plesiosaurs still existed today, but they don't. Anyway, like terror birds, Megalodon probably didn't encounter Auroran, but this one is at least more likely to have had a chance of occurring. It would just take one Auroran going for a swim in the shallow water off the coast at the right time. And since both coexisted for over a million years, even a low probability event has a chance of having occurred. I'd pay to see a movie about a troop of early hominids being menaced by a megalodon if it was done well. So that should give you a small idea of some of the animals that existed or could have existed at this time. You know, that was the very tip of a very, fasc of a very fascinating iceberg, but I can't cover everything. But again, it was a world both familiar and alien at the same time. You had animals basically living exactly as they did today. Like I said, antelopes, and you had animals that are totally extinct now, like Encylotherium. And you had giant versions of some animals we have today, like Megalodon and maybe Dinopithecus. What a fascinating period in prehistory that would have been to be alive in. Dangerous, but it honestly would be kind of cool. I know I spent most of the second half of this video explaining the world Auroran lived in and some of the animals that came and went before and after it, but that was to give you an idea of the bigger picture of the world Auroran itself lived in. Auroran is just an interesting topic. It's from a point of human evolution that we don't understand all that well compared to the topic as a whole. You know, it's unknown if Auroran is an ancestor or just an offshoot that died out. There are, or were, several early and very primitive hominids at the time. And most definitely, there are some we don't know about. And for now, we just don't know which led to us. You know, despite the debates, it is still accepted that Afarensis is the definitive early ancestor. We might have come from Auroran, or one of the several other early bipede apes that existed at the time. We just don't know. Afarensis is still accepted as the ancestor to humanity as of today. But I hope you found this topic interesting. This is an area of prehistory that I usually research. I'm a dinosaur fanatic. And I love what came before dinosaurs. You know, but all, um, but out of all post-KT extinction topics, I'd say human evolution and our early ancestors is one of my favorites. Definitely my favorite point of the Cenozoic. Um, but I do, and I always will, love dinosaurs more. I'd probably say dinosaurs, anything pre-Mesozoic, and then human evolution, and everything that accompanies each of those topics is how I would rank my favorite overar overarching prehistoric topics and things to research. But this was just a really interesting topic to research, and I hope we learn more about Auroran. I actually didn't know a lot of this information at all before researching, 
So I learned a lot as well. I learned of a lot of new species. I learned, I just learned a lot. That's one reason I love making this kind of video. You know, this is an area of paleontology. I just don't research much. I just love dinosaurs more and I prefer to read about them in my downtime if I'm going to read about this kind of stuff. You know, so many of my characters from my original stories are dinosaurs, you know, Spino, Nest, Shadow, and Version 2, but I also like to give the spotlight to non-dinosaurs at times, and I do that in my books too. And I'm glad I chose this topic to kick off my paleo documentaries. Again, I learned a lot researching this. The, the big paleo video about dinosaurs will be the big Cretaceous fauna documentary in a few months. That's why I decided to do an initial documentary that focused on something other than dinosaurs. And for you cryptid lovers out there, because I know some of you subscribed from the Loch Ness Monster documentary, I do plan to do more cryptids in the future. I know Bigfoot will probably get a video, I just need to decide how in-depth it will be and what all I want to cover with that. And other cryptids will probably get videos on them eventually. Anyway, that wraps up the history of the mysterious hominid Aurorin. Maybe we will find more fossils about this animal soon. Uh, a skull would probably be the most sought-after thing, I would argue. And maybe one day we will learn its true, pl its true place on our family tree, and if it is or isn't an early ancestor to us all. I really hope one day we learn more about this ancestor, and if it is or not, for sure. I want to know. And by the way, I can't be the only one who thinks that Aurorin sounds like the name of a place from Middle Earth, right? Right? I know Oradruin is the place in Middle Earth, Mount Doom, but come on, I can't be the only one who at least thought that. Aurorin, Oradruin. Come on, I can't be the only one who thought they sounded similar right away. Maybe I am? All right. Yes, by the way, we are well into my 10-minute ramble that goes at the end of each of these documentaries. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for watching. I hope you learned some stuff, and I hope you check out the other videos I've made, and that you will stick around to see what topics I cover in the future. I think next I'm going to do just some random gaming video for those who subscribe for that kind of content because I don't have much planned out. And again, I'm waiting on FNAF Plus to release to make as my next game series. The Steam page did recently change its status to coming soon, so very exciting. We might actually get to see it soon. It'll be nice to have a new... It'll be nice to have a new game series to do. My dog has finally interrupted me in a video that is not Five Nights at Freddy's. Good for him. <laughs> I just, I, I want to do a new game series soon. Those are relaxed. Those are just relaxed and easy to make videos. These documentaries take a while and they take a lot out of me. Uh, I love making this kind of video. It just takes a lot of work and, you know, sometimes it's nice to make videos I don't have to sink that much time into. I think he's determined to interrupt me for the rest of the video. He's, I'm going to kick him out of the room. I'll be right back. All right, he's out of the room, probably gonna go bark at the squirrels. But as I was saying, I love making this kind of video. It just takes a lot of work. You know, I've been working on these, finishing the last of wave three of the narrations and my books all at the same time. I need a break from such from so many intense projects all at the same time. You know, these types of videos are the ones that take the most out of me because all the research, writing, recording, and editing they take. This one took, and there he is barking again. This one took me three hours to record which is about typical for how long it is. And Wave 4 of Audio Narrations won't come until my book is basically ready to be published, which I'm still working on while making these projects, so I am a busy person. Though I do have more mini-documentary topics already lined up, the next one will cover a time in prehistory when a crocodile turned into a duck. And that is not a joke. That is a thing. Duck croc is a real animal. It's one of... Three, maybe four prehistory-themed mini-documentaries I want to make over the next few weeks. In that one, I'm going to try to make it shorter. I'm just going to focus on the animal and not the world it lived in as much. And not what it shared the world with as much. I'm just going gonna, gonna, gonna to put more focus on the animal itself. Because like I said, in the second half of this one, I kind of branched away from Aurora to talk about some other related topics. In that one, I'm going to basically just talk about the animal, everything about it, and wrap up. So that one will be shorter. And I'm not going to make those paleo ones consecutively because I do want to cover the Orang Madan, and I will probably do that after Crocodile Duck. So yeah, cool topics are coming up if this is the kind of content you like, and I hope you stick around to enjoy them. Please check out my other documentaries. There are, these are new. I've decided to start making these only this year uh, after I discovered how much fun I have making them. 
And check out my original audio stories read for my upcoming books. I highly would recommend the Survivor's Daily Routine series. Those are my personal favorites of them all. I'll link that playlist in the, in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. And hey, if you uh, know any fun facts about Auroran or any hominids I talked about in this video that I didn't cover, please feel free to share them in the comments. And if there was anything I didn't get quite right, please feel free to point that out too. This is overall such a complicated topic, I wouldn't be surprised if I mixed a couple things up. You know, I'm educated in homeland security, not paleontology. I love paleontology, I've loved it my whole life, but I'm not an expert in this field. And I don't pretend to be. I just do my best to make sure everything is correct, because these are fascinating topics and I want to get them right. So anyway, that's all. And I'll see you next time in whatever gaming video I decide to make. Um, or... I'll see you in the time a crocodile evolved into a duck. All right, have a good one.